There are so many new streamers coming to me with questions about their audio, and it seems to me the biggest misunderstanding is how audio is handled by Windows or how it's handled by software or hardware mixing tools, like Wavelink or the GoXLR. So one of the most helpful things to do when managing your audio is to diagram it. Let me walk you through how the basics of audio works and how to diagram it. So let's start with how your PC handles inputs and outputs. And I always put inputs at the top and outputs at the bottom of the device that's controlling it. Let's say you have a microphone. We're gonna treat that as an input. We're gonna drag that into the PC. That is now an input as far as the PC is concerned. We'll get to how the operating system handles this in just a moment. Next, you have hardware outputs. You may have speakers and we run an output to those. Or you may have a headset and you run audio out to those. Doesn't matter what the interface is. These can be 3.5 millimeter audio jacks. They could be USB doesn't matter. But these are the physical connections from your devices to your PC. And speaking of connections, you know what connection you don't wanna miss? You don't wanna miss connecting with this channel. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Also, you can follow me on TikTok, Twitter, or Instagram. Check the description for links. Okay, let's get back to the audio tutorial. Let's match, what if I have a physical hardware device like a GoXLR? Not a problem, you still have a physical connection from your microphone to your GoXLR, then from your GoXLR to your PC. Let me show you. So instead of this connection being here, what we're gonna do is we're gonna reroute that and we're gonna send that over to our GoXLR over here. We put it in the top to make it an input. Then on the output side, we go into our PC. So this is how it physically interfaces with your PC. But here comes the confusing part. Your computer treats every device differently. However, those devices still have a name and they still are treated as inputs and outputs. Now Windows separates these inputs and outputs and you're able to manage them using the managed sound devices. If you'll notice, here are all my output devices. As you can see, I have an Elgato Wavelink system. And you'll notice here are all my input devices. Now remember, audio outputs are where sound goes to, not comes from. Input devices are where sound comes from. So we need to make sure that our correct inputs are going to our correct outputs. So here's the device I wanna capture, my microphone in my Elgato Wave 3. Now Elgato Wave 3 comes with a mixing software called Wavelink. Think of it like a virtual version of a physical mixing board. That mixing board looks like this. Guess what? Notice at the top we have inputs and at the bottom we have outputs. I'm gonna capture this and we're gonna throw it into that diagram software. So inside our PC we have software, which is that Elgato Wave software, and Microsoft has our Elgato Wave mic. Here's one more thing we need to add to the mix. Desktop audio. You have games, you have different software that output audio. That's all in the PC. So let's create another input source and let's call it system audio. There we go. We now have audio coming from an application. Now we need to route these to our virtual or software inputs. So I'm going to route this into the Elgato Wave software and this is going to become my microphone. Our application or system audio is going to go into our system audio of our Elgato Wave. Now don't get hung up on all the semantics or how I have this set up. This is just all for concept. The same thing can be done with a physical mixing board. Just remember, all your devices that take in sound are gonna go into the input side of your software or hardware device. Now, if you notice down here, there are outputs. Wavelength has given you two predefined outputs that all your inputs are mixed into. One is your monitor, and you typically wanna set that to your headphones. A monitor is something that your audience doesn't hear, only you hear. It's to monitor your own audio. The other is the stream mix. That is the audio that your audience will hear. So this particular mixing software takes two input devices, mixes them together using its software, and then sends it to two virtual outputs. And then you can send those virtual outputs anywhere, out to a physical device like a pair of headphones or speakers, or you can even send it to OBS, and I'll show you that in a minute. Now this is gonna get confusing for just a couple of seconds, but stick with me. With these two outputs, we're going to output them to another device's input. Outputs from one device always go to the input of another device. We want our monitor to go out to our headphones. So Wavelink makes it pretty easy for us to tell us where that monitor mix goes. So using the pull down menu, I have it set to headphones. I could also send it to other audio output devices. Stream mix, when we select stream output with the Elgato software, it does not give us any physical outputs. This is because Elgato has designed this to actually mix this together to go to other pieces of software. Example, our OBS. So you'll notice there's multiple icons here, OBS, Streamlabs, XSplit, Twitch, these take you to instructions on how to capture this audio for your stream. But I'm gonna do you one better, I'm gonna show you. So we've already routed our audio to our headphones and the monitor mix is now going to our physical headphones. 
but our stream output needs to go to OBS. OBS has multiple microphone captures, and I'm gonna show you my settings so that you can match those to see if this works for you. In OBS, go to the settings, then click on the audio icon. Under global audio devices, you'll see that I have my desktop audio disabled and desktop audio 2 disabled. This is because I do not have my system audio going directly to OBS. I have it going through Wavelink. Wavelink is now my audio handling software, and it is the mixer, not OBS. So my primary microphone is the Wavelink stream. Do you remember that from earlier? That was the stream mix output. That output now becomes the input on OBS. But you notice I have another microphone input in OBS, the Wavelink Microphone FX. So this is a little bit different. I keep my Wave 3 microphone input separated from my system audio. It just allows me a little more control. However, you don't have to do that. So now you should notice on every stream, we have two audio inputs. Our stream output, which is our system audio, that's coming from the Wavelink software, and my Wave 3 microphone. Again, this is separated because that's the way I like to do this. But these could easily be combined and merged together using the Wavelink mixing software. So let's review, shall we? We have physical inputs that use USB or 8th inch audio jacks to go either directly into the PC or through a hardware interface such as a GoXLR. Those devices go into our PC. Our PC then assigns them names and identifies them as inputs. Windows also detects and assigns outputs. Those could be speakers, headphones, or whatever. Any device that handles audio, whether it be hardware or software, has an input and an output. So that takes us to our Elgato Wave software. In Windows, it is assigned my microphone the name Elgato Wave Mic. I set that device as the input to my Wavelink software, then have system audio or desktop audio, and I set that as the input named system. These are mixed together, and they are routed to our outputs. My first output is my monitor mix, and that using the Elgato software is output to my headphones. The stream mix output is then routed to my OBS software. We use the OBS software to set one of the microphone inputs to the stream output of the Elgato software. Again, I know this is a bit difficult concept, but every piece of audio equipment or audio software has an input or output. You just wanna make sure the correct inputs and outputs are routed to the correct places. So I know audio can be confusing and daunting, but if you diagram like this, it should help.